Hi everybody, this is Richard White and uh, today we're going to be looking at an introduction to object-oriented programming in Python. Uh, this is a topic that isn't covered by most students when they're first learning Python, but it's a really important topic and uh, everybody at some point ends up using object-oriented principles in Python, so it's a good thing to know about. Uh, we're going to start, this is actually going to be a two-part series, uh, we're going to start with a simple non-object-oriented programming, a little program that keeps track of my friends uh, by their name and phone number and email address. Uh, then we're going to step away from the keyboard for a moment to talk about object-oriented principles and uh, we'll develop the, the idea of objects there. And then we'll go back and reprogram that little contacts application using objects, uh, using an object-oriented programming context there. And then uh, in the second part, uh, in the second part of the series, we'll take a look at a different context and uh, jump straight into uh, an object-oriented approach to solving that problem. So I think you're going to enjoy this. It's, uh, it, you, you need to know a little bit about Python already. You need to know how to print things and how to get input. And you need to know about if-else conditionals and um, loops, for loops, while loops. You also need to know about lists. You, know, you need to have some familiarity with how all that works. And if you don't know about object-oriented principles just yet, um, that's something that we're going to be talking about. We'll at least introduce the basic idea here. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get started. So let's jump in and take a look at uh, how we might write a program to keep track of contact information for my friends here. So I've just got uh, two uh, windows open here, two terminal windows. Over on the right side, I'm going to be writing code. Uh, so this will be called contacts1. So this is going to be the um, editor that I'm using to actually write the code. And then over here on the other side, I'll be running the code to test it from time to time. Always a good idea to test as you're developing here. So I'm going to begin with my usual shebang user bin environment python 3. And I'll include my doc string here, three quotes there. And uh, I'll put the name of the program, contacts1. And uh, this program allows me to manage my contacts. Just some information here. And at author, I'm going to put in my name and the version. I'll just put in today's date. So all of this stuff is not required, of course, but it's a nice thing to have a doc string at the beginning of your program. Again, the triple quotes and closing those comments there. And uh, I'm going to define a main program then. You probably know how this works. Uh, I'll just print out contact manager. I'm using Python 3, so I have to put parentheses around that print statement. And then down here, I'm going to run this program. If the name is equal to main, then I will call that main function. So what happens is we're defining the main method here, or main function, and then down here this actually runs that. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to write that, and then we'll just make sure that that's working okay for us. I'm going to run contacts1, and there. It looks like it's printing out just fine. So I'm, I'm all set to go here. I'm set to write my program. So I'm going to keep track of my friends here, and let's think about uh, what I might want to uh, track with them. Uh, probably at this point, just let's keep it very simple. Uh, name is equal to, and we'll have um, the program actually enter the person's name here. So we'll use the input statement, uh, enter name, and we'll keep track of their phone number. Let's just call that phone, and we'll have them input enter phone. This is just to get us going at the beginning. And then finally, uh, email address input, enter email, and we'll let them get that information. And I'm going to print out that information for the person. I'll say print name, comma, phone, comma, email, just to make sure that it's all going in there. And of course, this isn't very sophisticated. We're just checking out and seeing how all this works. We're laying the groundwork for what we're going to develop in a few minutes. So let me run contacts one, and I can type in the name Susan. Uh, phone number doesn't matter, and email address susan at gmail.org. 
and it's printing that out. And okay, I guess that's fine for keeping track of uh, my contact information. Of course, the sad thing is this information all goes away as soon as the program's uh, done running. So uh, ideally, if we were actually going to be write, writing a contacts program, we would have some way of saving that information into a text file or some sort of database. And we're not going to be covering any of that today. We're just using this as a, a context for discussing object-oriented programming. So uh, that'll be a lesson for another time. So let's get back over here. What if I actually wanted to keep track of more than one person? What if I wanted to have a number of people in here? Um, how would we go about doing that? And I'm going to go ahead and let's get out of this program here. Um, I'll make a copy of this. We'll copy it over to Contacts 2, and we'll use this as a jumping off point for our next version of this program. So this is going to be Contacts 2 and we are still continuing to manage contacts. So how would we do that? If I wanted to have a number of uh, names entered in there, I suppose one of the things I could do, let's think about this, if I know about the idea of a list, I could make a, um, a list of friends, uh, but remember this list has to keep track of a name and a phone and an email for each person. So how would we go about doing that? I guess I could say friends is equal to an empty list. And let's say I was going to uh, do this with two friends just to demonstrate how this works. For i in range 2, we'll do this twice. And each time I'm going to print this information. So that will be the body of my loop there. And what am I going to do once I get that phone number and email and address? I think what I'll do is I'm going to append that information to my friends list. But that information is actually three different pieces of information. So maybe I'll append that as a list of name, phone, and email. I think that'll work for us. So when we try to print out, um, when we try to look at the friends, the name and the phone and the email of the friends, that's actually going to collect the information for two friends and store the name, phone, and email as a list. And then we'll have a list of lists, the friends list there, which holds those lists. Is that a little confusing? What I'll ultimately be able to do, though, is say for uh, i in range length of friends, which I expect will be two, um, I can print contact info. I'm going to do that each time. And then I'm going to say for j in range length of friends i print. And then I'll print whatever is in friends i j. Let's unpack this a little bit and make sure this makes sense. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to go through the length of friends. So i is going to be 0 and then it's going to be 1. It's going to get first my 0th friend, the first one, and my friend number 1, which is the second friend. And for each of those friends, for each friend in there, for each friends sub i, I'm going to print friends sub i sub j. So that inner loop, that J loop, is going to go through and get first the name, then the phone number, then the email. I think this will work. Let's try this. Let's write that out and then clear the screen and see if contacts two we can get to work for us. So I'm going to have to enter some names here. So I said Susan, and I don't care about these. These are just, and then I'll go with Joseph. And so then I've got my two contact infos that get printed out. So this is, this is working the way I expected. I get contact info, and it goes through and gets Susan, and the phone, and the email, and then Joseph, and then the phone, and the email. So this would work. This would work. This would be a way for me to keep track of multiple friends in my contacts program. All right. All right. I'm good with this. Um, but let's think about how we might be able to approach this from an object-oriented perspective. And to be able to talk about that, we're going to have to talk about objects. So I'm going to step away from the keyboard, like I said, and uh, let's talk about objects for a moment. So in object-oriented programming, we use a data structure called an object. 
And you already know about some of the data structures in Python. We've got integer data structures for integers and strings and a list. It's, these are just ways of storing data, different ways of storing data so that you can manipulate it. And an object is just another type of container that can be used to manage data in Python, in Java, in any programming language that supports object-oriented programming. So objects are organized into classes, and uh, these can be almost anything that you can imagine, usually some sort of noun. So, um, uh, and you get to decide what it is. Sometimes, you know, uh, a programmer will uh, provide you with the ability, say, to keep track of a pet object. And I have pets in my life, and so I would have what are called instances or actual objects that are associated with this pet class. If we have a pet class, then I could create what's called an instance or an object that belongs to that class. For instance, uh, my dog Sandy would be an object that belongs to the class pet. Uh, my snake Ringer would be an object that belongs to the pet class. And my cat Apple belongs to the pet class. So these would be instances or objects that are of this particular class. And as a programmer, I can write that. that The pet class doesn't exist in Python all by itself. I would have to write that class. And then I would be able to write a program that uses that class, uses that class to organize data. So for our contacts example, if we go back to that, um, we need to write some sort of class that's going to be keeping track of all our contacts. And so uh, let's call that the person class. We're going to be defining a class called person. And there's two things that you want to think about when you are creating a class. First of all, you have to understand kind of what's going on here. This is a template or a, a, a blueprint for data that we're going to be organizing. And the first thing you need to think about is, well, what kind of information do I need to know if I'm a person object? What kind of data is there going to be that that class will be keeping track of? When we wrote the first version of this program, of course, we had the name variable, and that makes sense. We're going to need to keep track of that. We also had the person's phone number, and we had their email address. And in object-oriented programming, we call these instances, or I should say instance variables. These are variables uh, that are going to store information that's associated with an instance or an actual object that is of the person class. So we call these instance variables. I'll just write a little note to myself right there. Instance variables. These are variables that when we create an instance, an actual person, then we will need to fill those in with the actual name, phone, and email of the person. It's kind of like uh, defining a, a function. When you de define a function, you've got parameters and that information is going to be coming in. And when you actually call the function, then you send in the actual values via those parameters. You can think of it kind of like that. It's not actually a function, but it, it kind of works that way. The other thing that we need to be able to think about when, as we consider our blueprint or our template for this object is, how are we going to interact with this data? What are we going to be uh, doing with this data? Are we going to, how are we going to be manipulating it? And it turns out that when you're doing object-oriented programming, in addition to thinking about these instance variables, you need to think about something called a method, the methods that you're going to be using to interact with these guys. So for instance, one of the rules of object-oriented programming is you're never going to interact directly with the name, phone, and email. Those variables are going to uh, be maintained within the class. But if I write a method, which is really just a function, if I write a function, say, called get name, and I'm going to indicate it with a period at the beginning and parentheses at the end because that's how we call it when we eventually use it. So I'm just going to write that there for now. If I have a function called get name for the person class, what that will do is that'll get out the name. That will allow me to retrieve the name for that particular person. So that's called a method. It's really just a function inside the class. I'm also going to need to write a method that gets their phone number. That makes sense. I'm going to want to be able to retrieve the phone number for any given person. And I'm also going to want to get their email address. It would be convenient for me to be able to recall that information, to retrieve it, to have access to it. It's also conceivable to me that I'm going to want to change 
say, the phone or the email address, I'm going to pretend I never have to change the name. It's conceivable to me that I might want to change the phone number if the person changes their, their phone number for some reason. So in addition to these methods right here, these functions that allow me to interact with person, I'm going to write a function or a method called set phone. And that function is going to allow me to change or alter the phone number for that person. I'm also going to write a method called set email. Maybe their email service is going to change, so I'll have to reset their email. So these are all the methods that I'm going to be using. With objects, you have attributes, or instance variables here, and methods, these functions inside the class, that allow you to interact with those variables there. Uh, when you talk to object-oriented people, they sometimes refer to these guys as accessor methods. They're accessing information inside the object. And because they, we usually write them with get in front of them, they're sometimes called getters, but they're really more formally known as accessor methods. These guys down here, because they alter the data that's in here, they're called mutators collectively, but again, you can imagine Sometimes they're just referred to colloquially as setters. So you have getters and setters. These are functions inside the person class. Those functions, when they're referred to an object-oriented context, are often called methods. And those methods are going to be interacting with the instance variables in here. So object-oriented programming has a lot of vocabulary associated with it. And so you can see that we've covered some of that vocabulary here. Now that we know this is what a person class looks like, at least for our example, let's go back to the computer and see if we can figure out how to do one of these in Python. So let's go back to uh, writing a Python program. We're going to use a person class to keep track of our contacts this time. So this is where it gets really interesting and really fun. If you understand, kind of, what we've done with that uh, object-oriented approach to this, creating a person class, then we can try and uh, make that happen in Python. So I've got my uh, infrastructure already all set up here. I'm just going to jump in here and uh, show you how you call or how you uh, create, construct an object. So uh, I'm going to have my friend1, and that's going to be equal to uh, what's the name of the class that we're creating? We're going to create a person class. And when I create that person class, I need to send in the information. And in this case, uh, I'll be sending in Jill and 555-1212. I'm creating, when I do this, uh, and Jill's address, uh, jbush at gmail.org. I know it's really not gmail.org. Um, this is how you would create or construct or instantiate, create an instance of a person. This would call the person class and send in this information here and use it to construct a person that we're going to call friend1. Uh, we need to tell, just as you would need to tell Python uh, what kind of function you were going to be doing with it by defining that function, we need to tell Python what a person object looks like. So before we even run the main program, we need to go up here and we need to define the class for that person object. So the way you do that is you use the keyword class person and then in parentheses here I'm going to put lowercase object. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. So it kind of looks like you're defining a function except instead of def you use the word class and then inside this class we're going to need to take care of three things here. Before I get too far into this I'm going to uh, create a doc string for this just to say the person class defines a person in terms of a name, phone number, and email address. Just uh, being very clear about all that. And then we're going to do two things, or three things rather, in this class. We're going to need to set up a constructor for that class. We're going to need to set up our accessor methods. Those are our, our, our getters. And we're going to need to set up our mutator methods, our setters. 
So these are things I'm just putting in comments there to make sure that I keep track of all this stuff. So the first thing that happens when we try to construct something of the person class, we need to tell this class how you go about doing that, how you take this information in this construction and actually create an object out of it. So the way you do that is we call a special constructor method called double underscore init double underscore. And in parentheses after that, you need to put the keyword self, a parameter, the name we'll say, that's going to be taking the name, the phone number, which is going to be getting the phone number, and the email. And what's going to happen is when we call person, when we try and construct this person, this first parameter here is going to go into the second parameter here. The 555-1212 is going to go up into the phone, and the jbush at gmail is going to go into the email. So those values are going to come in via those parameters there. Now this self keyword here is very interesting. Self refers to the object itself. And you have to put that at the beginning of any parameter list when you are constructing a class. So you can just think of that as plumbing right now that needs to be there. Self refers to the instance of the object. So when I, uh, th this method, this init method, will be called automatically when I construct the object person here, this friend one object. So what do I do with that information? Well, the name, which is coming in as this parameter, needs to be saved as an instance variable. And you might be tempted to think, well, I used the variable name before, so I could just do this, and that's almost it. That's it. The name coming in would be stored as a name variable in here. But again, there's going to be lots of names floating around here. There's a different name for every instance, for every object that's of the person class. So I need to make sure that I am careful about describing the name as being self.name. What this says is the name for this instance of the object, for this particular object, is going to be the name. This saves the name under a very special variable that only applies to this particular instance. And that's important because later on then if I come down here and I want to talk about friend2, I'm going to be sending in a different name for friend2 and I want to make sure then that name is not used for both of those. I'm going to have to use self.name each time. Uh, and by that same logic then self.phone is going to be equal to the phone that comes in and self.email is going to be equal to the email address that comes in. So this constructs a person object. Let's write very quickly our getters. I need to define, these are functions, these methods, they're actually functions. Uh, I need to define the methods that we said we were going to use for our get name. Get name, I'm referring specifically to the name in this particular case, so I have to put that uh, parameter in there, self. Again, I'm referring to this particular instance, and I'm just going to return self.name. I'm going to look up and see what the name is for this particular instance, and I'm going to send it right back. That's how the getName function is defined. So we'll have that method set up. You can imagine how the others go. Get phone. I have to make sure I refer to this particular instance of the phone number, and I'm going to return self.phone. And finally, get email. I'm going to return that as self.email. So what I'm going to be able to do then in my main program after I construct my friend1 is I'm going to be able to say things like print friend1 dot get email. And this is interesting because you can see when I call it, when I call get email, I don't have to put anything in parentheses. When I'm calling get email, it knows, Python knows that friend1 is the instance that I'm looking at. So this self there will refer to the friend1, and I'll return the email for that friend1. Uh, so those are our getters. We could go ahead and run that right now. We could check it out and see how it works. Let's go ahead and write that and see how it works. I'm going to go over here to Python, 
and this is contacts three. And what it did is it constructed, in line 35 down here, it constructed the friend, and then we printed out that email address for that friend, and you can see it did that. So it's working just as we expected. We also want to check out the mutators here. Let's do those. We need to define a mutator. We were going to set the phone number. Now when we call the phone, uh, the set phone mutator method, we need to indicate self. And we also need to send in a new phone number. We need to deliver that information so that when we say, well, self.phone is going to be set to a new phone number, we know what that number is. So that's how we do that. Um, and then let's define set email. Again, if we're going to be setting a new email address, we need to send in what that address is. And then we'll say, well, this instance's email address now is going to be set to that new email address. So I'm going to test this out. I'm going to um, print my friend one's email. I'm going to call the uh, set email to see if I can change that. Set email to jbush at gmail.com. That's what it really should be. Looks like I need to make sure I include some quotes in there, right? And then let's print out again friend1.getemail and see what happens there. Let's see if we've actually changed that in that process. So I'll run over and try and run this. And it looks like it changed the .org to a .com, just as we were hoping it would. So this is an example of how you can use a method, or rather a, uh, an object, a person object here. You can uh, define it in terms of its constructor in terms of its methods that access information in that object, and setters, which allow you to mutate or change aspects of that object. And then in this main program here, we're just taking a look at some of the ways that we can manipulate that information. It's pretty cool. Uh, I want to, before we uh, get too much further, I want to show you what happens if we try and print out friend1. What do you think is going to happen if we print that out? Is that going to print out all the information about friend one? Uh, this is going to lead us into our next topic here. So let's take a look at this when I call that. It's interesting. It printed out something here. Probably wasn't what I was expecting here. This is telling me that the main function was calling uh, the print statement and trying to do something with it. And it's identifying that friend one is a person. It looks like it listed the person class there. Uh, knows it's an object, and it says at, and then it gives this information right here. That's actually a memory address in the computer, which is really interesting. So it, it knows what friend one is, and it's no, it knows it's located someplace in the computer. It's not really giving me what I was expecting it to give me. I was hoping that I was going to get you know the actual name and phone number and email nicely summarized there. So let's see. Uh, let's let's go on to the next part of this, and let's see if we can figure out how to get it to do that. So we're going back and we're going to look at this contacts program. And I want, you, I want you to take a look and see right here in this header to the class, class person. And then in parentheses, we put the word object. Uh, one of the reasons that people really like object-oriented programming is because of something called inheritance. Uh, and what inheritance refers to is this ability for you to create multiple classes that inherit from each other. So for example, I've written a person object here, and you can imagine that there might be subclasses or smaller levels of persons that I might want to keep track of. I might have a friend class that inherits from person, that has some of the same qualities, some of the same variables that person has, along with some of its own. Or maybe I have a family class that inherits from person that has some of those same characteristics in it. Or work. I've got work colleagues uh, that I deal with, and those inherit from the person class. So when we write the person class and we put this word object in here, what we're saying, what we're referring to is the super class, that is the class above the class that I'm writing here, which has its own characteristics, which has its own attributes, it has its own methods that are inherited 
by the person class that I've written. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the second part of this when we write um, a different class uh, and create subclasses for that class. For now, um, what you should know is that this object superclass that person in inherits from, that object superclass has its own methods that are available to us. One of those methods is the string method, the double underscore string method. And I'm going to um, include a header for a double underscore string method right here. If we don't define our own double underscore string method here, every time I try and print something, this basically creates a string version of the object. Every time I try and print something, and we saw how that worked last time, it gave us that memory location. Every time I try and print something, because I haven't defined a string, double underscore string method here, that double underscore string call or that print call refers to the object class, which has defined this method. And we've seen that, we've seen the result of that. If I print an object, what it does is it gives me the name of the class object and it gave that memory location. And what I'd like to do is write something that's going to be a little bit better than that. I'd like to write something, I'd like to, <clears throat> I'd like to do uh, what's called overriding. I'd like to override the object double underscore string method and write my own for that. So down here, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, calculate a value for that string uh, and return that value. So anytime I try and print a person object, it's going to print whatever I define here. So uh, I'm going to be returning a string value and typically, I mean there's lots of different ways that you can format this. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to return the, um, the class of the object here, person, uh, but I'm going to return it as a string, so it's going to be person, and then in square brackets I'm going to include the uh, attributes of this thing. So I'm going to say name is equal to, and then I'm going to add to that the uh, name string, self.name. And then I'm also going to add to that, and this is going to be a multi-line statement, so I'm going to do a backslash to indicate that I'm moving on to the next line here. I'm going to add to that the string, uh, what else do I have here? Oh, a phone. I need to include the phone that's in there. And so I'll add to that self.phone. And looks like I need to go up here and maybe get rid of that space. There is, you can return whatever you want to this. is just a format that I'm kind of used to here from Java. Self.email. And then notice how I'm lining these up to make sure that I'm kind of covering everything. And then I'll close that out with a, a square bracket there. So this is a new method in my person class. Anytime I try to print a person now, what it's going to do is it's going to return, or it's, uh, it's going to call this method, which will return this particular string. I'm going to put together that string and then that'll be returned. So now that I've defined that, I don't have to change anything down here when I print friend1. Rather than going to the object superclass and printing out whatever was defined for the double underscore string there, now that I've overridden that double underscore string, I'm going to be calling this instead. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to write that and then let's see if we can run that and see what happens. So this is Python uh, contacts and this is our third one. And you can see now when I printed that out, I have person, name equals Jill, phone is equal to that, and email is equal to that. So it did actually go through and assemble those materials so I can print them now. And as I say, you don't have to format it this way. You can format it any way you want, but um, that, that turns out to be very useful in certain circumstances. So this is great. Uh, to finish up this part of the, um, this part of the lesson, let's go ahead and take a look at one more version of this program which tries to pull a bunch of these ideas together and create a more or less complete working version. So to finish up, let's take a look at one last version of this program. This is Contacts 4 and I've written this, uh, I'm not going to develop this here online, I've written this offline and so we're just going to run through real quickly and see what this looks like. It's got the same exact class that we wrote before so there are no changes here. The changes that I have made include writing a few new 
functions here. Def enter a friend. This is a, a short little function that asks the user to enter a name, phone, and email. And then this function returns a person object. It creates a person object, constructs a person object, so that when we call the enter a friend function from down below in the main here, let's go see where that is. Enter a friend here. When we call the enter a friend function, it gets that information. The enter a friend function returns a person object. And then what we do is we append that person object to a friends list that we've created. Here's the friends list. So this is going to append a new friend to that list. That's in our main program. A couple of other methods that we've written here. Uh, look up a friend takes the list of friends, uh, gets input on a name that you'd like to look up, and then goes through that list that list and tries to find a friend in that list with the same name. Maybe not exactly the, the same name, but if something like that name is in there, then it's going to print it out. Um, by the end of that list, if we haven't found it, then we're going to say we didn't find any friends that matched that. And then finally, the third function that's new here is show all friends, basically as a loop that just sets up and goes through and prints every friend there. So here's our main program that calls those guys. It presents a little menu here. Uh, asks for input and then checks to see if the input is one, two, three, or four, and then calls the appropriate function for that. Or if it's four, then it's going to end the program. If it's not one, two, three, or four, then it's going to say it didn't recognize the input and have them try again. And we'll continue running through that little while loop as long as running is true. So let's see what that looks like when we actually run the program. We run Python with contacts four. There's our little contacts manager. We'll add Joe Smith, uh, his phone number is 555, and no email address, we'll leave that blank, and then I'm going to have um, another Joe, let me put another Joe in there, Joe Jones, and no phone number for him, and no email address for that person. Uh, if I want to show everybody in the list, it's going to run through, there's a list of everybody I know, I should put one more person in there just so it's not so boring, uh, Susan... Jones and oh sorry that was your phone number I messed up on the information there I need to write an editor for this huh uh, if I look up somebody sorry let's show everybody if I show all you can see everybody's listed there if I look up for um, Susan look up Susan you can see that it's finding Susan there it's not getting the others if I look up for Joe I should get two that are printed out. There's Joe and Joe Smith, or Joe Jones and Joe Smith that both get printed out. Looks like this is working just fine. If I end the program, it's going to end the program, and then here's the sad part. It's a it's a great little program, but the sad part is if I run it again and try and show all my contacts, they've all gone away. So the next step, I suppose, in writing this program would be to uh, create a way of saving all those names, all that information to a text file. And then I could load up that text file every time and actually have an ongoing contacts manager. So that's it for this particular video. Part two, the next video, we are not going to do the external file saving. We're going to look at another object-oriented program, a, um, a different kind of problem. We're going to write a completely new class to solve that kind of problem. And uh, I think it's going to make, if you, if you found some of this a little bit sketchy or a little bit hard to understand the first time, it's always hard the first time you write your first object, your first class. So uh, we'll go through and we'll do it again and we'll see if it works any better. See you then.